Okay. Nova Scotia freshwater adventure. Uh, we pulled over. Saw a lake that looks like it's pretty good for fishing. Got a one day freshwater license. Ow! Not really a trail. Short rod, tiny lure, trying to get to the lake. Wearing my sunglasses, not because I need to look in the water so I don't get twigs in my face. And got a fishing platform. And this lake looks great. I'm hoping that there's some pickerel, real pickerel, not walleye. This one was close to shore. You know, this is amazing. Just to come into a lake you've never fished before, cast lures. Hey, it's my first pickerel, Nova Scotia pickerel. Come here, he's a little bit wound up in the line. Look at this. You know, I gotta explain to you, and I can't put my uh, finger in his mouth because he's got teeth like a northern pike, but I can hold him like that. You see why they call him a chain pickerel? If you uh, go down his body, you can see all those beautiful chain-like marks. Look, I'm fishing for little fish. because I think like a big chain pickerel is like seven pounds. This is probably around average, maybe even a little smaller. He nailed this thing and I hooked him pretty good. Look, you fish for little fish, you have little pliers. There. Oh, he's not hooked too bad. At least he didn't eat it. But this is my first uh, Nova Scotia chain pickerel. Hope it won't flop out of my hands. I'm gonna talk about that lure in a minute because we're using a very specific lure for this kind of fishing. Look at those beautiful chain-like markings. Isn't that amazing? So you know back in Ontario a lot of people call walleye pickerel. Well this is a pickerel and he's a chain pickerel. You see that line below his eye? He's got it on both sides if you look close. It's a line that goes down and you see those little chain-like markings. So there's lots of them here in Nova Scotia. Tell you, he's a beautiful fish. Gorgeous markings. Okay, I'm gonna drop in the water and I'm gonna tell you about the lure that I've got. He should take off. Come on, come on. There he goes. Beautiful. Now, I'm just using a light action spinning rod and I've got a small storm body bait. This one's jointed. You know, uh, Jeff, our good friend, has a lot of nice gear. This is a nice sensitive rod, medium action reel. Um, this is the lure that I've been using. It's just a tiny, it's a storm and it's a jointed one. But the key thing is that it's shallow running. So this lake, if you look in the distance, you can see boulders sticking out. We just walked into it. It was pretty rough walking in there. But I've been told that the lake is only like one to three feet deep. So it's not that deep and the fish can be anywhere. So this is an ideal outfit to use. I'm gonna try making another cast out there. Um, we checked the regulations for Nova Scotia and we got a one day fishing license. I think it's $13 because I've been doing mostly saltwater fishing. We'll probably be fishing for mackerel again either this afternoon or tomorrow just for fun. And uh, we found out that the regular season's closed. It closed in October but there's an extended season and the lake, one of the lakes that we're fishing, I can't mention the name, it's so good, um, has an extended open season till December. So if you check the regulations, they have a really good system to see um, what's open and what's not and limits of fish. And you can get your license right online. And I have mine on my phone. You can print it. It's very easy to do, especially if you have plastic money or credit card. So this is nice. So we're just going along here and casting. It was worth the trek in. So I'm going to go. Oh, what do I have? Oh, I got all excited. This is why that guy was here. Look. This is, uh, it looks like cattail. So I think earlier in the season there must have been cattails here. Because pickerel are much like pike. Um, they like to uh, hang around different obstructions like rocks, weeds, and they like to ambush their prey. And you know, even though we don't have a boat here, we're just walking around this lake. And you can see this is the size of the lake. It's not a huge lake. We're actually covering the best area. The best area is that first 30, 40 feet of the shoreline. So even if I was out there in a kayak, or a boat I'd be casting towards the shore to get the fish. Okay, maybe I'll get another one. A monster, maybe 16 inches. You know what, they're small, they don't fight for it. I would be curious to see how they taste if they're like our pike and if they have the same Y-bone system. So I may keep a, a, a couple to 
big back. I don't think uh, Jeff Wood has tried them. Look at, I think they're so pretty. Tell you what, they are aggressive. So even a small fish like that, I can get a couple of fillets off it. So I'm just curious, because I haven't had pickerel before. I've had lots of walleye. You can see this guy wanted it. He hit the front of it. He got tagged on with the second hook. He doesn't fly out of my hand. He should be okay. I think a key when you're fishing some of these smaller lakes, I mean, I would really call them ponds, is to have like shallow running lures. You can use a spinner. I know pike and pickerel love spinners, but the problem is with spinners, they sink real quick and you can get caught up if there's wood or everything. But look at, look at the teeth he's got. Just like his cousin, the northern. And you can see that line below his eye there. And uh, they're pretty, I don't know if they, call, if they uh, classify them as invasive, but I think the limit is like 100. You know, not that, I don't know who would keep that many of them. And I understand from the history that at one time they used to harvest these and use them in the lobster traps, but I don't think they can do that anymore. I just think they're so pretty. Look at, not gorgeous? What a gorgeous fish. It's amazing. We thought we'd come out in November because there's not a lot of people out here in Nova Scotia. And we saw quite a few people and talked to people around Ontario. And also the Nova Scotians, they're so great. You know, staying right on the beach at Lockport at Seaside Cottages at Ginger Hill. It's so nice because you see people walking down the beach. And most of them are locals. I have never seen so many people walking as in Lockport. And I'm talking about the residents. They're very, very smart. For what I understand, there's lots of 80 and 90 year olds walking. So I think the reason why they're living so long, they're eating well and they're walking. They're not, you know, driving. So what's amazing is in November, this is the first week, almost the end of the first week, and it's like 21 degrees Celsius. Uh, from what I understand from talking to Jeff, the weather stays mild here even in the winter time. If there's any snow that falls like this much, it's gone in a matter of hours. So it's pretty temperate right through the winter. You can get storms, but, that's, but where they are in Lockport, it's very protected because they're facing south and kind of southeast. So it's a wonderful place. You know, this morning I was shooting the sunrise and the water just rolling in gently and seeing the different colors as the sun was getting closer to the horizon. It was just awesome. So I mean, the fishing, it just was my excuse to come to Nova Scotia. The big part of it is the seafood, the people, the accommodations. I'm telling you, the, beach, the beaches are amazing. that that solitude <laughs> nice hit in the rocks this reminds me of fishing for the pollock only we don't have the big waves and the salt water seaweed this guy whacked it feels heavier maybe he's hooked on the side of the head oh there he is oh yeah nice size one look at gorgeous fish to swim down. Ah, that's, that's compared to what we've caught. This one of the biggest ones. Will he fall off? Let's test for this rod. Yeah, that's a big one. Oh, 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 I want to just show you to the camera. Hey, 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 hey. I got the line wrapped around my hand. That's funny. Now, they're kind of slippery. Don't mind the needles. They're native to here. Let's see if I can very gently, without hurting them, because I want to release this guy. We've got a couple that we're going to try taking home. Okay, here, let me get this off you here. Here. Look at this. Let's see if we can get him in the sun. Look at that. Isn't he gorgeous? Such a beautiful fish. I love the chain light markings. I love variety. Okay, here we go. Bombs away. Try to throw them out a little bit. The shots will wake them up. Is this from? And just like that, he was gone. Yes. You know what? I feel like a kid again. I've got a rusty stringer, thanks to Jeff. Look at it. I've got a couple of uh, pickerel. I remember when I was young, you know, I used to fish from shore. I got all kinds of mud on me from getting the fish off. I used to fish from shore, you know, when I was uh, like 12 to 15. And I used to catch small pike and take them home and eat them, you know. And uh, the pike were probably this big, but to me they looked huge, you know, when I was like 12, 13. But you look at how gorgeous these guys are with the sun on them. 
I don't think I've used a stringer for years. But you know, if you're going through the bush and stuff, I'm gonna to try to walk through this heavy stuff and hold it above it so they don't get dirty until we get back to the car and then we'll put them in a bag. But I'm really looking forward to trying, trying them. I'm gonna cook them the same way as we did the Pollock, you know, just pan frying them. And I'm gonna try taking the uh, Y bones out. I, I wonder if they've got more bones in a pike, but it, I think they're just such beautiful fish. You know, when you come to Nova Scotia, it's all about variety. Variety and having fun. Okay, here we go. Old man trucking through the bush. I only fell down once, by the way. Coming in here. Barbara, get the frying pan ready. We're having fish for dinner. Okay, first time uh, filleting a chain pickerel. He's nice and cold because we had him on ice in the cooler. And I'm really excited to uh, see what their structure is like and also to uh, see what they taste like. I'm liking the color of the meat, very much like pike right now. Feels nice and firm. And if it does have Y bones, the Y bones should be close to the lateral line. way so that I can go right underneath the fin. I want to keep a nice fillet just like that all the way to there. So you know for a little guy we're getting quite a bit of meat here. There. Flip them over again. Just to do this part right here. So I'm gonna do that and look at that nice fillet. I don't know where is that? Oh yeah they're here. I can feel them right there so we're gonna deal with those in a minute. Let me do this side. You know, I've never been one to take the whole side of the fish off and go into the body cavity. It's just the way I learned how to fillet fish. So I go down and I go around the rib cage, not right through it. Yeah, I just heard those Y bones. You can see I'm trying to save all the meat. So I'm trying to go really close with my knife angled towards the spine. Man, you have those nice gold colors. You look at I mean, with meat looking this good, you gotta taste great. So, that. And I'm gonna do this as well. Here, again, I'm gonna lose that um, belly meat. So now, let's get the scales off. A few bones right here. So let's see here. Yeah, I feel them. So they have wide bones like a pike. See, look, you can see, see the Y bones right there? These little lines, those are the Y bones. Usually the Y bones get closer to the back at the front here. So you see them right there? And then at the back, they get a little steeper. And they go past where the body cavity ends. So now I'm gonna go down the lateral line. I'm being maybe overly cautious, but I don't want us or anybody else that might be enjoying this fish to get any bones. I might even keep that Y bone strip and cook it because I don't mind taking the Y bones out. They pop out real easy once you do the fish. So, these guys weren't very big, but you know what? It's kind of a nice fillet there. You'll see in a minute here. I've just gone through the skin, which is okay. Because that's the Y bone part. So this is where the Y bones are, right in here. And this should be boneless. So, go from the back. This is a really sharp fillet knife. I should be doing this on the edge of the board, but I started in the middle. I guess I'm gonna finish it. That's why you need a flexible knife so it'll bend to go over the skin. Okay, so it wasn't that hard to remove the Y bone. So this is what we, we're dealing with here. Look, we've got a um, nice strip of meat here. So that's without the uh, Y bone. And I'm gonna do that the same other fillet and then the other fish and we're gonna go back. Sit. Yeah. Anywhere. Or wherever you like. Yeah. There's three on the bench on the other side and then or a chair. We tried to wipe the table and it, we, had, we were not successful. 
It's all it's fine. Fine. It's all fine. We tried to extend it. We can't figure out how to extend it. Okay. 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 I got my first old age pitch check last week. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there's been two or three. It was caught there. How many inches today, fellow? Biggest one. Uh, I'm going to say 22. Because most of them were small. I'm going to say they were smallest was 14 to about uh, maybe 20 inches. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 